Numbers of the 13th chapter. And uh, we're going to start with verse 1. Then we're going to jump over to verse 17. When you get there, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It reads like this. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, let's go to verse 2, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I gave, which I give unto the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers, shall ye send a man, every one, a ruler among them. Jumping over to verse 17. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, and said unto them, Get you up this way, southward, and go up into the mountain. And see the land, what it is, and the people that dwell up therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what the land is that they is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that they dwell in, whether it in tents or strongholds. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether they be wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Reho, as men came to Hamath. And they ascended by the south and came into Hebron, where uh, Heman and Shesh, if I mispronounce, mispronounce these, don't think nothing. Uh, Sheshai and uh, Tal, Talmai, what, uh, my Lord. And the children of Anak were. Now, <laughs> now Hebron was built seven years before his own in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Eshcol, and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they I think we got a battery going out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And they came unto the brook of Eshcol, and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bare it between two upon a staff. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. Thank you, brother. The place was called the Brook of Eshcol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after forty days. And they went and came unto Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And the Amalekites <coughs> dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it, is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. 
And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, so we were in their sight. And I'd like to title this message this morning, if I could. We are well able. We are well able All right. to go up and pursue and possess the land that the Lord had promised. Right. Even though that we know that they are giants and, and obstacles and stumbling blocks in our path in our way, I want you to know this morning that we are well able right. to make it. Amen. We are well able to possess it. That's right. Hallelujah. We are, we are well able to proclaim it. Pastor, would you pray? Great God, as we come before you one more time, God, with thanksgiving our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for this word, the reading of it this morning. Thank you, God, for the content, for the message, God, that's in these pages of this holy book. God, we thank you for your holy word this morning. God, we thank you for the direction and the strength that it gives to us. God, I pray that you'd anoint our brother, God, as he brings forth the word. God, give us ears what your spirit, God, would speak into our hearts this morning. God, we give you all the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. Praise I am so excited. Amen. As I was getting into the word uh, these past several days that uh, I had a another message uh, for this morning but here just the other day the Lord he changed it just like that and said another time this is too big uh, but we're gonna uh, preach that here just in a few weeks uh, come up but this morning the Lord's got a word for you this morning Hallelujah. And I'm so excited. Yes. It's as if it was given a gift or a piece of candy to a young child or baby. Uh, my Lord, this word that the uh, Lord given me, without a shadow of a doubt that He is reminding us this morning through an example that was performed uh, before us, to give it to us, to let us know, regardless of, what strongholds that are in our life, that what may come and what may go um, in and out of our life, that we are well able to make it. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, we are. Thank you, Jesus. We know, amen, that the Lord had commanded Moses to send out 12 spies to, to search out the land therein and see what that is therein in that land, whether it would be lean or fat, whether what kind of wood and material would be there to build with and, and so forth. And uh, I tell you, but the 12 spies, they went out to the land there and they saw, my Lord, as the they saw the, Anak, the, the giants there in Canaan and and everything they saw how high the walls there were fenced in and so forth and on but but i want you to know this morning that they went in amen then uh, the 12 spies but they were two that really stuck out to me through them all and that was joshua and that was caleb Amen. And I want you to know that they searched it out and they looked and they saw everything that was therein. And they brought back forth fruits of the, the land. And they brought back pomegranates and figs. Yes. Amen. And they, they brought back a cluster of grapes. And I thought, well, you know, I was going to go brother back here and get a big old cluster of grapes with a big old grape, big old uh, uh, vine. A branch and uh, so and his pomegranates and so forth and the milk and honey that was there in that land and, yeah. and they said, my, it is such an exceeding good land. This is a place where we can build. This is a place where we can grow our crops because the soil is good, it's fertile. All and right. uh, I was thinking about everything that is there in that land and uh, my Lord and Joshua and Caleb said it is an exceedingly good land. We can go up and we can possess 
this land. But you know, the other ten spies, they came, and but all they could see was everything, Brother Becker, all they could see was the walls, how high they were, it fenced yeah. around about, the, yeah. about Canaan, and, and all they saw was the giants, and fear began to grip their hearts. Right, right. I want you to know something this morning, sometimes as we're on this journey, Amen. Knowing that the Lord is with us and He set out, He sent us out. Amen. On a journey. And I want you to know something this morning. We ain't got our traveling shoes on. My friend, we need to get our traveling shoes on this That's morning. Right. On. Hallelujah. Yeah. I tell you, God brought the children of Israel mighty long ways. Amen. I tell you, the Bible says that their clothes did not wax old. Their garments did not wax old. Neither their sandals, neither did their ankles or their feet swell. But they saw the hand of God and miracles how God sent down quails for meat and manna for bread out from heaven. Yeah. Hallelujah. They saw the hand of God and they saw the miracles. Amen. That God brought them this far. Yeah. Amen. Knowing that God wasn't just going to drop them off in a place of wilderness just to leave them there. Right. Hallelujah. But you want you to know something. That even though they were tested and trialed, tried, amen, that they begin to gripe and murmur and complain all the long way. But I want you to know these ten spies that came back right after Joshua and Caleb said that it is exceedingly a good land that we can, that we're well able to go up and possess this land. I want you to know something this morning, my friend. God has given us everything that we need this morning to make it. Right. He has given us everything that we need. He's given us, the, He has equipped us with everything. God did not call us out of the darkness into His marvelous light. God did not bring us out of the bondage of slavery out from Egypt to just drop us off somewhere along the wayside. But I want you to know those of unbelief and doubt in the wilderness stuff, the Israelites, they begin to gripe and murmur and complain. Yes, Saying, did. did you bring us out here to die? Yeah. My Lord, after knowing and seeing what God had done for them, how he departed the Red Sea yep. and uh, brought him along this way and God slew the Egyptians in the midst of that sea and they were overturned. And I want you to know those ten spies. I thought, my Lord, that the doubt, the fear, and unbelief, uh -huh. they did not have no idea what it was going to cost them when they came back to the people to share such news. And they spread it, lie, and slander, and saying it's not a good land. Hallelujah. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it. It's a land that ended up in inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Yes. Yes. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come from giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and as we are in their sight. I want you to know something this morning. Sometimes that we get so caught up into the giants of our life, the tear in our life that comes in and goes. And sometimes we get so discouraged that we cannot see the good of the land of, of that the Lord had promised. That's but right. all we see That's is right. the, the giants. That's right. Therefore, we back down and we get discouraged and say we can't do it anymore. That we're not able to do this. We're not able to go up. We're not able to possess heaven. Amen. As the Lord has promised you and I yes. this morning, I tell you, my friend, God has well equipped you this morning. God yes. wants to encourage you, remind you through His Word this morning. Oh, Amen. That we need another spirit. Yeah. Amen. As he said, yeah. Amen. That those yes. from 20 years and up, they will not go in into the land to possess it because of the doubt and of the unbelief and of the grumbling, complaining, and murmuring. All right. But I got this. If 20 went, if 20 and on up was not going to enter in, that means not painting on down was going to make it. And say Joshua and Caleb, 
Because they had another spirit that says, yes, yes. we can make it. We can. That's right. Woo. I want to encourage you this morning that we can make it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can possess the land. We can enter in. Hallelujah. I don't see the giants this morning. I don't see the obstacles in my life this morning. But I want you to know something. Those thumbing blocks that comes your way. I want you to know something, my friend, through the power of God. Amen. We're able to turn those thumbing blocks over and turn it into stepping stones. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, are you awake this morning? I know it's been mentioned one more time. Hallelujah. They say, well, if you ain't saying nothing, you ain't doing nothing. They're listening. Hallelujah. I believe it's. Oh, let me tell you something this morning. It stirred my soul. Yes. It reminds me no matter what comes and what goes in my life, no matter how many giants comes my way, how many, how much sickness knocks me down, how many times the discouragement comes my way and says, you know what? You can just might as well just give up because you're not going to make it. Right. Bill, you're a liar. That's right. <laughs> I have a word from God this morning. Hallelujah. 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 I have a word from God this morning saying, yes, you can make it. Yes, yes. Amen. We need another spirit. We need the spirit of Caleb. We need the spirit of Joshua. Right. Rise up in our hearts and our eyes every day. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I want you to know Jesus. something Praise this morning. Without Thank that, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. without allowing the spirit of God to rise up in you, I want you to know something. There's going to be times and situations that's going to come your way that's going to knock you down to flat in your face. Yes, sir. But I find also what the Word of God says. Though a man falls seven times, God is able to raise him up. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord a hand clap in this place this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. I like it. Though a man falls seven times, God is able to raise him up. Hey, my friend, he knows that we're going to get discouraged sometimes. He knows that things are going to come our way and the devil's going to hit us. My Lord, it feels like sometimes we've been hit with the baseball bat. Come on now. Yeah. But we're able this morning. We are so able this morning. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. I want you to know something for each one of you. God's got a word right now this morning for each and every one of you. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know your situation in your life. But I want you to know something. God's got something for you before you leave here this morning. Uh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Lord spoke and says, because all this, talking to the Israelites, you will die in the wilderness. Your carcasses will fall along the wayside. Yeah. You will not enter in yes. into the promised land because of your doubt and your unbelief. And that's exactly, my friend, what happened. Hallelujah. Yes. Doubt and unbelief. Right. I want you this morning to look at yourself. Don't look at one another. And I want you to look at yourself this morning. And saying, you're probably saying, you don't know the, the, the things that I'm facing in my life, the trials I'm facing in my life, and the things that I'm going through, the devils of hell that I'm facing, and these stomach blocks and the situations. I want you to know something this morning. Look at yourself. And look where you're sitting. All right. Look at yourself and look where you're sitting this morning. Yes, sir. You're here. Right. You're here by the grace of God. Yes. You're saved by grace through faith. You're here this morning yes. in the house of God. All right. All right. I'm going to tell you. Good word. Good word. Praise God. God did not tempt Hallelujah. for you not to make it. He's not, calling, he's not going to call you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Right. For you to fall by the wayside. That's right. Like the children of Israel. That's it, brother. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Wow. Yes, times, there's times of discouragement. Yes. There's times of disappointments. Yes. There's times of sickness. There's times of sorrow. But the Bible says that there's, there's a time for everything. But I want you to know something. The Bible says also that many other afflictions are the righteous, but the Lord is able to deliver them. From them all. Hallelujah. Praise God. Give, the son, Lord, Lord, Lord. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Oh, God. Give the Lord a hand of praise because He's worthy. He brought you this far. 
He brought you a mighty long ways. Oh, and I want to tell you something, my friend, this morning, every who you are, He's going to continue on sending you along your way. Because why? Because heaven oh, is for you. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me tell you something. We have a hell to shine this morning. If I could think of a place of hell, it'd be back there in Egypt many years ago. Let me tell you, we have a heaven to gain. Let me tell you something for that promised land. Yes, yes. And I'll show you this morning. Yes. We have not got time to fear the giants in our life. Come on, but I want you to know something that we are able to possess that land. Yes, it are. is exceedingly a good land. I want you to know something. Yes, hallelujah, right. hallelujah, hallelujah. Once you have entered into that land, the promise. Yes. Once you have entered into Canaan, yes. you're going to have fruits for proof. Yes. Yes. You're going to bring back fruits, Brother Maxwell. Amen. Bring them back. Yeah. I have fruits for proof this morning. I've seen, I saw God adulterated word. A word from God right here that cannot lie. I'm going to tell you something this morning. We ought to take this word right here to your heart and apply it to your everyday life. Because I want you to know something this morning. We're going to need it in times when it's least expected. When we're going to be faced with something that's going to hit us so hard and knock us flat of our, of our back. But even though we get hit so hard, I want you to know something this morning. God is able to raise you right back up. Right. God is able this morning to put you right back on your feet. That's no right. matter what situation you're facing, no matter what stomach block, no matter what job that you're facing in your life. Uh -huh. You may be facing sickness yes, that is overtaking. The depression and stress, anxiety sets in and discouragement. But I want you to know something this morning. That if God be for us, then who can be against us? It doesn't matter, amen, this morning what Satan will throw up against you. No matter if it is sickness, no matter if it is oppression or depression, no matter what it is, that God is able to see you through. Why is that? Because why? Because you are chosen. You are His elect. That's right. Hallelujah this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Fruits for, for proof. They brought back a cluster of grapes and pomegranates and figs. And then it has abundance of food and floweth with milk and honey. The ground is good for fertile, good soil to plant crops and raising animals. Hallelujah. Everything that they're in right there. Amen. That God, I tell you, God equipped them to go up to overtake all the Hittites. And there's a bunch of them. Hallelujah. My Lord. Brother Becker, they probably had more there than Carter got old pills. I ain't heard that in a long time. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I want you to know something this morning. All right. There's not anything that our God cannot do this morning. All right. yes. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Caleb said, let us go up at once. We are well able to possess the land. Hallelujah. I want you to know this morning that we are well able to go up and possess the land this morning. But those that brought back that evil report, that slander, that lie, that discouraged the Israelites. They had no idea that their life was going to be taken. Those ten spies that went up and saw the very same thing that Joshua and Caleb saw spread slander. <coughs> Making it sound like it's not worth it, it's no good. But Joshua and Caleb Say so it is exceedingly a, a good land that we were well able to possess it. Just because those spread it, those lies, it cost their lives, and the Lord killed those ten spies. Hallelujah. I want you to know, and I got to begin to think about how that the tares of the wheat, amen, and how that the wicked one that came in and sowed those tares. Among the wheat. And we want to say, when did these come that sow these tares among the wheat? Shall we go ahead and pluck these tares up? The Lord said, no, don't leave them there. God will take care of them. At that day. Hallelujah. Don't you know something this morning? Amen. That there's things 
And yes, the evil one, the enemy himself, will come along and he will use somebody else to spread a lie, to tell a story, to spread discord right, among the brethren. I want you to know something. Pray for them. Right. But in the last day, God will have his way with them. He'll take care of them. Let me tell you, some things can't be helped. But you know, God's in control this morning. The battle is his this morning. It's not ours. We're away. And allow the Lord to send us and for him to have his way in our lives. I believe that when Jesus, amen, when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he prayed, and he said, Lord, let this cup pass me. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours. The Bible says he sweated. Yours, hallelujah. He sweated blood as it is great drops of blood. Right. As he sweated. Right. That agony, that sorrow that he felt. And when the end, when the soldiers came in, and there's uprising, Peter stood up, going to bend his Lord. Come on. He cut off Brother Becker's, Malchus's ear. Yes. Yeah. He said, Peter, he said, put down thy sword. Uh -huh. He said, if you live by the sword, you will die by the sword. Abundance, a supply of food and soil. So, this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to know this morning with another spirit, there's a blessing to wait when we enter there. Right. Let us not be worried and well doing, for in those season we shall reap if we faint not. Faint not. That's right. Are you worried this morning? Are you worried this morning in your walk? Hmm. <laughs> Praise God. Come on, somebody. Are you worried? Are you tired this morning? Are you exhausted? Has it been a long journey? I want you to know something this morning. That God is able to lift you up this morning. And carry you along the way. You're going to make it this morning. You're going to make it this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us not be worried. We'll do it for a new season. We're sure we can faint not. Sometimes we're going to get worried in our life. But I want you to know that the word says, Be of good courage. I have already overcome. Right. Be of good courage. I have already overcome the world. Yes. And let me tell you something this morning. Uh, you have this morning inside of you everything that God has equipped you with this morning to make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No matter maybe what may come or what may go. Yes, there's going to be stumbling blocks that comes our way. But I got one news, one thing for the devil this morning. I like to say, devil, you go ahead and bring them along. You go ahead and bring the giants my way. Because this morning, my friend, I am well able to make it. Hallelujah. We have such great power, amen, that the Lord has invested in you, in you and I this morning. The Holy Ghost. If you haven't got the Holy Ghost this morning, my friend, you need the Holy Ghost. I mean, you need the power of God. Acts, I believe Acts 1 8 says, But you shall receive power that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. I want you to know something this morning. When you have the Word of God right here in your life, in your heart, the Word is your sword. But let me tell you, when you've got the Holy Ghost to go along with it, you talk about a power tool. Come on, somebody. You can be able to push back the forces of Satan. Hallelujah. You're able through the power of God. Without Him, amen, this morning, we are powerless. We are powerless. There's nothing that we can do within ourselves but God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God said that he would make you the head and not the tail in your life. Hallelujah. But I want you to know something this morning. Amen. All the promises of God are yea and amen. Each and every one of them this morning. Hallelujah. They're yours and they're mine. And God says, yes, you can go up. Yes, you can make it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Over Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter. Amen. Verse 12, 13, and 14. Thank you, Jesus. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swore to the fathers. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, the corn and thy wine and thine oil, the increase of thy kin, and the flocks of the sheep in the land which he swore unto the fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shalt not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. I want you to know something this morning. Before you came to the Lord, we can look back into our life and see, again, how our life really was and how that we were without and how that our life was full of turmoil and and chaos and my Lord, there was uh, for me I could say that there wasn't hardly a night of pleasure, a night of peace of sleep that I had up 30 years and down in my life. And as I was at my uncle's funeral just here a few months ago, I began to see some of my family members and they they see and they remember back that when I was out in the world 30 years of my life, and they Brother Becker, they began to look at me and say, God has richly blessed you. No, I don't live in a great big fine home. No, I don't drive the greatest and the finest vehicle that there is. No, I don't have the greatest bank account that there is. Sometimes I haven't got the quarters to rub together. But I want you to know, amen, they wasn't talking about all of that. But what they were talking about, Brother Becker, when they saw the countenance that was on Brother Bobby's face, All when they right. began to see how good that God has taken care of me, All what right. God has done for me, and where God has brought me to, I yeah. want you to know, they said God has richly blessed you. Yes, yes, I want you to yes. know something this morning, that God has richly blessed you this morning. Right. Hallelujah. It ain't all got to do with the finest things and material things in this life and in this world. I'm going to tell you, I believe the Apostle Paul said this. He says, make not provision for your flesh. Right, that's right. Hallelujah. Yes. Make not provision for your flesh. Yes, yes. Our life does not consist in the abundance of the things which we possess. What it says, but our life yes. is in the blood. Our life is in the spirit. Right, right. Caleb had another spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Do you have another spirit this morning? Yes, yes. Do you have another spirit this morning yes. that will rise up and say, yes, I can make it. Yes, we can make it. I want you to know something this morning. I do not choose to partake of this world in this life. I do not choose to go out and enjoy the pleasures of this world that will wrap the world around about me and smog and smother me down. I take no pleasure in that. All right. right. Let me tell you, you take my spirit away from me, I'm not. I believe the psalmist David said this, Lord, Take not thy spirit away from me. Right. Yeah. Take not That's thy right. spirit away from me. You take this life away from Brother Bobby, I promise you, I would be one of the most miserable persons that there are in this life, in this world. All right. And I assure you, my wife sitting back there, she would not like this old boy. She probably would not even, could even stand this old boy. Right. Especially after tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. Right, right. 
She said I was good before. And yes, I was all right. But when I came to the Lord, she says, yes, that's what I've been wanting. Yes, I knew it was in there, but the Lord just had to bring it out of you. Yeah, yeah. Only God can do that. Come on now. Come on, somebody. Can you say the same thing this morning? Yes. Yes. Before I came to the Lord, I was nothing. I was no one. But let me tell you, when I came to the Lord, mm, whoo, praise God. My wife says, now I've got the husband I've always wanted. Right. I'm not sure she said that before, but when I came to the Lord, she says, now I've got the husband that I've always been wanting. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Another spirit. Come on, somebody. There's a spirit out there in the world. It's not of God. Yeah. The Bible says that any man is a friend of the world, is empty with God. That's the Bible. That's the Word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I know one thing. The Lord has made me a promise. The Lord has made you a promise. And we are making our way. We've got our traveling shoes on this morning. We're headed towards that promised land, Brother Becker. Yeah. We're about to arrive any day. Call somebody. I said, we're about to arrive any day. We don't know when, but I know we're about to arrive any day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He said that he would make, my Lord, I tell you. Did you mm, let me read this right here one more time? And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. And will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine and thine oil, the increase of thy kin and the flocks of the sheep and the land which he swore unto the fathers to give thee. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something, other my friend. That you are a child of God. You are the son of God and you are the daughter of God. Right, right. And I want you to know something. Those that are daughters of God, Brother Becker, he said that he would make the womb fruitful. That's the promise of God. That's the word of God. I believe it. I believe it. But I want you to know something this morning. The devil wants to bring forth discouragement. He wants to bring forth a lie. He wants to bring forth slander this morning. But I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about the blessings of God this morning. Yes. Sir. I'm talking about the promises of God this morning. Promises this is for you. Yes. This is for you this morning. Yes, yes. <laughs> Woo. Right. Hallelujah. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. It will put none of the evil diseases of you from Egypt, which thou knowest unto upon thee, but he will lay them upon all them that hate thee, speaking of your enemies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 8 and 1. And all the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do it, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart. Did you hear that? I want you to know this morning. That sometimes in our way of life, the Lord will try thee and prove thee to see what's in your heart. The Lord knows what's in our heart this morning. He knows the very thoughts and intents of our hearts, the Bible says. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. To know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Come on, somebody. And I believe that we can go back to the scripture where it says to count the cost. Come on, somebody. Yes, it's going to cost us to serve the Lord. Yes, we're going to be tried. But I want you to know something. 
that we have another spirit this morning. No matter how we're tried, that we will come forth as pure gold. We will make it. We will stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou amused not. Neither did thy fathers know what he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone. But get a hold of this, my friend. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God doth man live. Mm -hmm. You shall live. You will live, my friend. This right here, my friend, is all you need right here. Come on, somebody. This right here will take care of your sickness. This. <laughs> woo. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to have a shopping service tonight. Hallelujah. This word will bring forth your every need. He will take care of your sickness. He will take care of your financial debt. He will take care of food on your table. Right. Food on your uh, uh, clothes on your back, right. shoes on your feet. That's right. Right. This right here will take care of your enemies. Mm -hmm. My Lord, I tell you what, somebody will be shouting. All right. Mm, hallelujah! Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Somebody will be shouting over this. Praise God. Hallelujah! 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 Where's Brother Hard at? Right. He feels so close. I'd reach out and grab him right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Praise Hallelujah. God. Praise God. This right here. That's why it's important. This word will keep us from sinning. Yes, it will. So almost David say this. Lord, let me hide that word in my heart. Well, I will not sin against thee. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to know something this morning. There's not going to be anything that's hid that is hidden within the Lord. Because our sins will find us out. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Thy raiment wax not old upon thee, neither thy foot swell these forty years. Thou shalt also consider in thy heart that a man chasteneth his son, as the soul of the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Sometimes it hurts, doesn't it? Sometimes it feels like Brother Becker, I've been whipped up one side and down the other. But don't you know something, my friend? It's for your own good. God loves you. He cares about you. He wants to see you enter in. Amen. My Lord, the gates of hell. Amen. That the place of a lake of fire was not prepared for you, but the Satan and his angels. Right. Hallelujah. Right. That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways and fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, fountains and depths, and a spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vine and trees, and pomegranates, and a land of olive oil and honey. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Come on, somebody. There might be times in your life not long when you're going to get your next meal at. You don't know how you're going to provide. You don't know how you're going to make it. You don't know how you're going to pay that lot bill or those debts that you owe. But I want you to know something this morning. God said he'll make a way when there was no way. He said he'll make it ahead not to tell. Let me tell you something, other, my friend. A child of God is not in poverty. The world's in poverty. Come on, somebody. Oh, my. We are in the world, but we're not in the world. Come on, somebody. And I'll tell you, brother, that this right here, my friend. Jesus was talking to all these mildly scribes and Sadducees and Pharisees, my Lord. And he's speaking to them. He says, hey. He says, I'm out of this world. And speaking of you, he says, they are not either. Right. We are not of this world. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. Hallelujah. Right. And we're not from this world. Because why is that? We, yes, we have, my Lord, bearing in our father's earthly father's birthright or birth and certificate. My Lord, I tell you, when I, uh, you know, most women, when they get married, they have a maiden name. But when they get married, for some reason, that's just the way it is. They switch the name over to Becker, to Brown, and etc. And Maxwell, Kashahayo. But I want you to know something this morning. That it's time to bear our Heavenly Father's name. That name is Jesus. That name is Jesus. That name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. But he says, I'm out of this world, and neither are they. Neither are they. You're not of this world. 
You have been born again. The church here is your mother. This is where you've been born again. There's been a delivery taking place. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. The church is my mother. And he's my father. And one of these days, there's going to be a wedding. Yes, sir. Woo. A wedding. There's going to be a wedding taking place. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Without scarceness, thou shalt not like anything in it, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good of the land which he hath given thee. Hallelujah. Give back what the Lord has given thee. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's why a lot of times, not to preach on it, but I want you to know something this morning. We cannot outgive God this morning. He's done something great in our lives. <laughs> Amen. He has saved us from pits of hell. Amen. The blood was shed on Calvary for the remission of our sins. And now we have the blood applied to our heart's doorpost. Come on, somebody. Right. Amen. You have received salvation. Also, you have received, uh, my Lord, if you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and your name's written down in Lamb's Book of Life. My Lord, a lot of you, before you, when you, when you came to the Lord, before you came to the Lord, didn't know how you was going to make it to supply and, and, and all your financial uh, needs and, and, and so forth. But I want you to know that when this old boy came to the Lord, I'm going to tell you, bills got paid. Table, food got put on the table. Hallelujah. And I want to give back what the Lord has given me. I don't want to cheat. I don't want to rob God of anything. Because He's done something great. Amen. I want to be blessed by God. Hallelujah. That's why I pay my tithe. And that's why I pay my offering. That's why I give God my time. That's why... I give Him my praise and my worship yes. and a song from my lips. Right. Hallelujah. I don't know. I mentioned this here not too long ago that the Lord's been waking me up sometimes between 2 and 4 o'clock in the morning. And I want you to hear the strangest thing. That my clock has been going off 4 o'clock in the morning. And here's the strangest thing right here. At 4 o'clock, my clock is not set for 4 o'clock. My clock is set for 6 o'clock. It's for work. And there's nowhere at all 4 o'clock is in my alarm. So my clock has been going off 4 o'clock of the morning, Sister Beck. It's been going off 4 o'clock of the morning. And all I can think of is the Lord's waking me up to talk to me. That's God. That's God. Hallelujah. I want you to know something. Sometimes we get so busy in our lives, so busy in our day, sometimes that uh, we don't have time for the Lord, it seems like. But I want you to know something. If you want a fellowship, if you want a relationship with God, He's going he's gonna to find you. He's going to come down. He's going to speak to your heart. He's going to wake you up through His Word, my friend, and He'll do so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Lord. I'm about to close. Singers, musicians. They may be making your way back. This morning we are well able to make it this morning. Amen. No matter what comes and goes in our life and what gets in our way. Amen. That we will take these. Amen. These uh, stomach blocks and we will turn them over to stepping stones. Through the power of God. Hallelujah. I hope and pray you got something out of this this morning. I know that I did. Hallelujah. We are well able this morning. Hallelujah. To go up and possess the land. Thank you, Jesus. Well, somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah.